Hello, today we'll be uh, talking about a very short topic, which is subcutaneous emphysema. When does it happen? It happens if someone has trauma to the chest, if it happens if someone had a burst of uh, one of his alveoli. It can also be seen if someone had esophageal perforation. So basically anything, any structure that has air in it, if there's a loss of integrity in it while it's in the chest, this can go out and uh, from that structure and go through the tissues. Now, if that air um, reaches all the way to the skin, you will end up with something that is called subcutaneous emphysema. People describe subcutaneous emphysema as if you put your finger on the skin, you'll feel as if there are bubbles. And those bubbles will have um, some kind of sound as if you're touching bubble wrap. And you can feel it with your um, tip of the fingers. And at the same time, some if the air quantity is um, too much, that might lead to a feeling of swelling and it might be painful. Now, this subcutaneous emphysema is usually something that we do not treat. It's something that we discover and it would tell us something about the patient, for example, um, the trauma extent, or for example, if a patient has COPD and um, had some air bully and those air bully burst out. So that tell us that, that a patient is advanced or has severe uh, COPD. Most of the time, we don't need to treat it, and it's something that we just uh, can do, um, just monitoring, unless. Imagine if you have an organ that has um, air in it and it burst, and that air, for some reason, entered the pericardial sac. Okay, if it enters the pericardial sac and it causes pressure on the uh, heart, that will develop something which is very similar to cardiac tamponade. All right, and you can watch one of my other videos talking about cardiac tamponade. At the same time, if you have the lung and the lung burst out and the air got into the plural sac, you will have something what we call a pneumothorax. And if the air goes into the mediastinum, we call it pneumomediastinum. And all of those can be, can be conditions where surgical attention is needed. The surgeon would open the chest or would open the area and would end up with a chest tube that is placed under water seal. So let us show you an example of a subcutaneous emphysema. I chose this x-ray because if I ask anybody to um, comment on this x-ray, everyone is going to recognize that the lungs look really, really bad. Okay, so you can call it uh, bilateral infiltrate, diffuse, and uh, some people might just stop right here. The problem is a chest x-ray is not just for the lungs. You have to look at other things. So I want to note to you, if you look at this area where the skin is, you can see that there is some black streaking over here in the skin. You can also see it on the other side. And if you look under the axilla over here, you see the same thing. You see some air going here, which is black, in between the white tissue. And in this case, this patient has subcutaneous emphysema. You can see it on both the right and the left neck, and you can see it on the uh, left chest wall. That's why when you're reading chest x-rays, you always have to have uh, some kind of methodology. Otherwise, you'll be looking at the lungs and you'll be forgetting other things which might tell you something else. All right. And that's it. That was a very short topic. If you like this uh, short lecture, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.